Did you know that the Statue of Liberty was originally a bronze color? When the Statue of Liberty was completed in 1886, it was actually coated with 31 tons of copper, and she was the color of a penny. Only a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you end up liking this video, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind in the future. Enjoy the video! About three decades later, the Statue of Liberty became blue-green color that we know today. So what is responsible for the color change? Well, it is oxidation. Oxidation reaction of copper. Let's look at this reaction in detail. Copper atoms react with oxygen in the air and formed cuprous oxide, which has a reddish color. Cuprous oxide is further oxidized to cupric oxide, which has a blackish color. If the air is polluted, especially in the cities, sulfur produced by burning fossil fuels in the air can react with copper, forming copper sulfide. Over the years, the cupric oxide and copper sulfide slowly react with carbon dioxide in the air and water from rainfall to make various forms of hydroxides. And these hydroxides constitute the patina. The extent of humidity and the level of sulfur in the air determine how fast the patina develops. So, what is patina? The word patina comes from the Latin term patina, which means a pan or a shallow dish. Patina is a thin, usually greenish layer that forms naturally on copper and bronze metal when they are exposed to air for a long time. Why do we use copper so often in architecture? Well, copper can be cut and hammered into shapes and it will protect itself by forming a patina on the surface. It also adds a beautiful aesthetic to any building with its distinctive coloring. Examples of such structures include the Parliament Building in Canada, Belvedere Palace in Vienna, and of course, the Statue of Liberty. Well, that's it for today.